Nowadays, dating has turned into an online endeavor, especially with the impact the pandemic has had on most of our personal relationships. Meeting new people online can be a cool thing because it opens you up to so many more people than you would normally meet just in person, but it also opens you up to catfishes. As we continue to meet and talk to people on the internet, knowing the signs of a catfish can be vital. So let's talk about the top 10 ways to tell if you're being catfished. At number 10, suspicious photos. Let's say that you've been talking to someone online and you're catching feelings for this person. You believe that all is well, except there's something a little sus about their photos. If you think that the pictures they have on social media or that they send you are a little weird, you might be getting catfished. For example, if they have a lot of group photos or low quality pictures of their face, chances are they might not be who they say they are. Sometimes people zoom in on a group photo and share that, pretending to be someone from their friend group or another group of people. If you find that they can never seem to share an in-moment selfie, this could also be a red flag alerting you to the possibility that they're lying about their appearance. If you find that they never post pictures with other people like family or friends, this could also be a little sus because this person could be stealing photos from someone else and they could also be using old pictures. And lastly, if you're able to reverse Google search their picture and it comes up as being from someone else, you know you've been bamboozled and you better get out of that relationship quickly. At number nine, lying about their career. When you're using apps like Tinder or Bumble, a lot of times people will often include their alma mater in their bio. Most of the time you'll see normal schools like state schools or local colleges or universities, but there are also the select few profiles you may come across that say this person went to Yale or Harvard or another one of those huge Ivy League schools. While yes, this can check out some of the time, other times this person is catfishing you. One way to catch them would be to ask about their job. I promise you, if this person says they went to Harvard Law, they have a job. No one would be turning down a Harvard Law student. If you're talking to someone claiming that they are unemployed despite having gone to an Ivy League school, there's a good chance that they're just lying to impress you. There's nothing wrong with going to a regular college or university, and I'm sure that anyone would be impressed by the fact that you got a post-secondary education in general, because a lot of people can't actually afford that, and it's honestly a privilege to be able to get an education, so there's no need to lie about it and catfish someone. That's just disrespectful, so look out for that red flag. If you're enjoying the video so far, please do consider leaving a like on this video because it really helps us out and we love getting your positive feedback. At number eight, too perfect. We may all be familiar with the phrase too good to be true, but this saying is something to definitely keep in mind when meeting people online. As much as we'd all like to match with someone who looks like they were chiseled by the gods, in reality, things don't always work out like that. If there's one thing I'm sure many of us have learned through watching the MTV show Catfished, it's that the most common trope in catfishing is pretending to be some super hot model type person. Now don't get me wrong, we all have a shot at getting that happily ever after with someone who looks like they belong on the cover of Vogue, but when it comes to online dating, you never truly know who you're talking to unless you meet them in person. But it's not just looks that can con you into thinking that this person is too perfect. Even if this individual looks like a normal person, Person, but claims that they're a heart surgeon at a children's hospital who volunteers at the shelter and writes poetry on the side, you might be getting catfished. Catfishes can also try and woo you with their charm and alleged riches, so unless you know someone who can back up their lavish claims, they might be too good to be true. At number seven, no phone calls. Communication is a big thing in a relationship, whether it's romantic or just as friends. Talking to each other is really important. Though texting is all fine and dandy, sometimes you just wanna hear this person's voice and so what happens if they refuse to call you? Well, unfortunately, that's another red flag. Dodging a few calls here and there could be nothing to worry about, like if you caught them at work or on the can or something, but if it's a constant dismissal of any sort of vocal communication, that could be a problem. There could be a number of reasons why this person wouldn't want to talk to you on the phone. They could reveal too much about themselves over the phone, mainly the sound of their real voice. If they've sent you videos of themselves in the past and their voice on the phone doesn't line up with that from their videos, they could be a catfish. They could also reveal themselves to be someone that you know, pretending to be someone else as you'd recognize their voice. Though some catfish are able to use voice modifiers to keep up the lie, others aren't so advanced and may request to not speak over the phone so that they don't get caught. At number six, no FaceTime. Much like the no phone calls thing, another warning sign that you may have fallen victim to a catfish is the fact that the person you're talking to refuses to have any FaceTime calls. Like I said earlier, communication is a huge thing and so being 
being able to talk face to face, even if it's not in person, is a good way to establish a better relationship. A lot of the time, catfishers will refuse to do video calls and give a lot of excuses like, oh, my FaceTime doesn't work, or oh, my phone is about to die, or my camera is broken. If this person really likes you the way you think they do, they would find a way to talk to you face to face. It's only natural. So when someone keeps giving you excuses as to why you can't talk to them one on one like that, I think it's safe to say that you're being catfished. At number five, no Snapchat. Continuing with the theme, if your partner doesn't have Snapchat, it could also be a potential red flag. Now, some people say that if the person you're talking to doesn't have a Snapchat account, it could be a huge red flag, but I'm not so sure. I mean, there are a lot of people who don't have Snapchat for personal reasons. I think that it's a bigger red flag if this person does have a Snapchat, but doesn't have a very big snap score. Basically, if you look at their profile on Snapchat, you can see their snap score, which is the number of snaps that they've sent or received. For people who are very active on the platform or have had their account for a long time, they'd have a pretty high snap score, but if it's suspiciously low, you might have a problem. Chances are they could have made this profile to catfish you or other people that they've met online, so question them on it. And if their answers seem a little suspicious, Move on, honey. At number four, no meetups. Now, if you've been chatting with someone you've met online for some time, you may want to take things to the next step and try meeting up with them in person. Normally, if it's a proper relationship, the two people would make plans to have a first date or something, but if the person you're talking to always seems to dodge the meetup, you may be dealing with a catfish. For catfishes who pretend to be rich business people or something along those lines, they could possibly make the excuse like, oh, I'm always traveling, but in that case, you'd question how strange it is for them to be traveling everywhere except for where you live. It's a little weird, right? Another red flag could be their excuses. Say for example, you two decide to meet up for dinner and just before the date, you get a message from them detailing some dramatic event that's preventing them from meeting up. That could be a huge cause for concern, especially if it happens on multiple occasions. Keep track of their responses and if it seems too over the top or dramatic, or even if they use the same excuse multiple times, it might be time to end things. At number three, asking for money. One of the biggest warning signs that you could be getting catfished would be that this person keeps asking you for money. There have been so many stories of catfishes asking their partners for financial support, and it's so sad to see these people getting taken advantage of. So if this happens to you, get out of there. There is no reason for someone that you just met to be asking you for money. Even if they make excuses like they're going to use the money to buy a webcam or something so they can video call you, or that they need it to buy a new phone to talk to you, never, ever, ever give a stranger money no matter how badly they say they need it. There have been too many scams prying on vulnerable people, so please keep this in mind when meeting new people online. If you're in a real relationship with a real person, they would never ask you for money. Never give out personal information to people you don't know and always be vigilant. At number two, they're famous. If you match with someone online and their profile says that they're famous, don't buy it. Unless they're calling themselves famous because they have like a thousand YouTube subscribers, it's probably too good to be true. Chances are you didn't match with Tom Holland on Bumble as much as you would like that to be real. I think by now most people would know to be a little apprehensive if you match with a celebrity online or if a celebrity slides into your DMs out of the blue. A lot of catfishers impersonate celebrities and influencers to trick people, especially their fans, into believing that it's really them. There have been countless times that people have been tricked into believing that they're dating Megan Fox or Chris Hemsworth, and people have gotten their hearts broken or worse. Catfishes impersonate famous people because it's easy to get a hold of their pictures and personal information, and because like I said, fans are easy targets. So as much as you would love to date a Hollywood A-lister, chances are you won't find them on Tinder. At number one, gut feeling. I've told you about other signs and red flags to look out for to tell if you're being catfished, but I think the biggest tell is yourself. If you have a feeling in your gut telling you that this is wrong, you're probably right. I'm sure at any point in a conversation with someone you're interested in, there would come a time where you think, hmm, I don't think this is working. And if you feel that way, end things. When it comes to meeting strangers online, you have to keep your guard up because there are unfortunately a lot of people out there looking to exploit you or hurt you for their own gain. And that's just not okay. So next time you're talking to someone new online and you have that gut feeling, leave them on red and move on because you're worth so much and don't deserve to be bamboozled by anyone. Now, I want you guys to tell me if you've ever been catfished, and if not, then what was your worst dating experience? I want you guys to give me all the tea, but in the meantime, let's get to reading out some of your comments from our video. We need to talk about Trisha Paytas. 
Savage Bat Kitty says, I thought we left her in 2020. I would love to think that we did, but unfortunately, Trisha is like a parasite and she will hold on for dear life. Scandal after scandal, she, she's kind of good at that. We can't just leave her. Unfortunately. Artist Owl says what she did to Dissociated went too far. Trisha should be off YouTube. She almost killed someone for making fun of the person's mental health. It was so, so hard to watch Dissociated go through that. I have been one of Dissociated's viewers for some time now, and I love what their platform does. I love their system. Everything about their channel is amazing. So to see them getting bullied by not only Trisha, but a lot of other people on the platform, like Trisha's fans and whatnot, it was so hard heartbreaking but now you know hopefully they're doing a little bit better sneaky sly slytherin says oh she did not get into beetlejuice and hamilton she's going to totally ruin them my hatred for her is skyrocketing i'm just saying skyrocketing because it was emojis but yeah um she's made cover videos of her singing songs from hamilton and beetlejuice and i love those two musicals so much so it kind of hurt me a little bit not to be like mean but like, you know, she, she kind of overdoes things when she's really obsessed with something. She kind of just like does it until it's just dead. So hopefully that doesn't happen to, to this, these musicals because they're just too good to die like that. KEWF says, Bri, I just want to say your makeup is on point every single time. Well, thank you. I normally do it in the dark, so I just hope the best, but thank you for commenting on my face. <laughs> JoLynn Studer says, what is she famous for? <laughs> that is a very good question. What is she famous for? Because after all the research I did into her, I still can't determine why she's famous. I think she just made so many weird videos that people were like, who's this girl? And then they just subscribed to see more weird stuff. Like that's the only explanation I have for that. I really don't know why she's famous. My Fantastic Nail says, I seriously needed Bree's reminder of me getting water. I'm so bad at drinking anything in general, even when I've literally got a bottle of water right in front of me, I still forget. Thanks Bree. You're welcome. I'm here to keep everyone hydrated and healthy. You know, keep your, your bodies in check, you know? get Don't be dehydrated, that's not good. I don't know what the health things are about dehydration i just know it's bad so don't be dehydrated drink some water <laughs> thanks so much for your comments and for sticking around until the end of the video i've been your host b room and until next time stay safe drink some water fantastic nails i'm talking to you and as always keep being your amazing and beautiful selves <laughs> bye guys